Welcome to this week's episode of the Baseball Together Podcast, Baseball Family. This week we have Nolan Arenado is finally traded. We have the MLB and MLBPA really going at it. And we have a special guest with us, Alan Snyder. Next. Nine Plus Us presents the Baseball Together Podcast with your hosts, Blackjack Brad and Kansas City Little Big Briggy Blue Eyes. And now, Baseball Together. Welcome to this week's episode of the Baseball Together Podcast, Baseball Family. I am Brad, and to my right, I have our guy, Brig. hey oh, <laughs> hey hey blow. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have a lot to get into. This was an incredibly eventful week. I mean, up to the very moment we were coming up and pushing record. Um, but we'll be honest with you, we left some stuff out. We left some of it out because we wanted to get to our interview. Had a special guest, uh... Alan Snyder, the host, co-host of the Booze Your Daddy podcast. Um, so that was that was a fun interview. We wanted to get to that. So here we go. Let's get into this and get it done. You ready, Brig? Yeah. Yeah, you know okay. it. Okay. You know. You know. Okay, so we had <laughs> Nolan Arenado this week was traded. It was actually the trade was made official just minutes before we came on and recorded tonight. It is Monday, Ooh. February the 1st. Um, he's traded to the Cardinals. Now, this is the interesting thing. As soon as, pretty much as soon as the Cardinals, or sorry, not the Cardinals, the Rockies, signed him to that massive contract, they started shopping him. Yeah. I don't, I don't get it. It's like, we're going to show that we care about you, we respect you, we want you around, so here's this contract, but we don't want you here anymore. I mean, it's like instant buyer's remorse. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It, it made no sense. It's it's not made any sense until now, and now it makes a little bit more sense because he's under contract still through 2026, which is part of what didn't make any sense is that they mm-hmm. signed him to this big fat contract uh, with all this time. And it, you know what? At the time when he got tra- when he signed with Colorado, it was like all right, it was a huge deal. But now compared to these other big big long deals, it doesn't make any sense. So the market has shifted dramatically out of Nolan Arenado's favor. And now he's with the Cardinals until 2026, until he opts out uh, next year, at the end of next well, season. Which yeah, he, he has could. An option. Yeah, he has an option to opt out at the end of the 2021 season. And it'll be inter- interesting to keep an eye on him, how he kind of vibes with the team this year. If yeah. he fits in and he plays well in St. Louis, I don't expect him to opt out. But then again, he's only going to be 30 years old this season. This is 30-year-old season. He's got a chance, a chance, Brig. To get a big fat contract, one more big fat contract for like eight to ten years, because he's still it's true top three third baseman in the league, top three third baseman oh, in yeah. the entire MLB, no doubt, no doubt. So, I don't know. I could see him opting out just to try to get that one last contract to up up the ante from what Colorado paid him because he's still owed about a hundred and ninety nine million dollars. Yeah, that's this season through twenty twenty six. I could see yep. him shooting for two fifty for those. Six to eight years, something like that. Yeah, but even then. Yeah, in the if he if he went two fifty for eight years, yeah. that, if he went two fifty for eight years, that'd be a pay cut. Totally, because he's averaging about thirty five to thirty seven million dollars. So, yep, I don't know. I agree with we'll you. We'll see what happens. Something pretty to keep exciting. An eye on. Yeah. Well, it and is, I can see is, so. like in my head, I'm already moving through like who's gonna get who's going to have third base slots open at the end of next season. That's what my brain started doing as soon as I saw this particular yeah. detail. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Interesting detail. And like we said, something it's exciting, something to keep track of because we love free agency on this podcast more than most things, but unless you're a car, a uh, Rockies fan and then yeah. <laughs> this is a sad day for you. And we empathize. We, well, we can sympathize. We've bo- both our teams have done stuff like this. So it's true. I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry, yes. Colorado. And I'm sure it won't be the last time Colorado does it because <laughs> or everybody it, it else, you know. <laughs> yeah. You but, could have the same pro- the opposite problem picking up, you know, John Carlos Stanton for nothing for a lot of money but getting nothing <laughs> out of it. Anyway, yeah, sorry. It's true. It is the so, uh, ag- exact opposite end of the spectrum. <laughs> the exact opposite. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Yeah. Dilly dilly. Let's do this. <laughs> All right, moving on. So Literally seconds before we came on to record, we I got a notification on my phone that said the MLBPA declined the MLB's offer 
to 154 game season with that comes with a one month delay of the season with a one week extension, extended playoffs, and universal DH. Right. MLBPA said no. Okay, they don't they don't want that. Part of it is because there's no explanation as to what happens if games are lost due to the ongoing COVID nineteen pandemic. Um Okay. Because last year, you know, like we saw everybody be able to get their games in. Everybody except for St. Louis and Detroit played sixty games. They both played fifty nine because it ended yep. up being I, I'm pretty sure it was inconsequential. But right. this is one of the things they said. Uh, it has to do with that. Let's see, where was it? Um, oh, and players would have been paid their full salaries. There would have been no um, no pro rating mm-hmm. for the 154 games. They'd have gotten paid for 162 by playing 154, which... What? Okay. You ask me, I feel like that's a pretty good deal you got there. In the players' well, just... favor, Players Association. It really... <laughs> honestly? <laughs> honestly? <laughs> The whole deal was so player friendly, and I felt like they just declined it because they can. Yep. They're trying to muscle up and flex on the MLB. I keep saying the MLB, it's just MLB. But, anyways, they keep trying to flex with the upcoming expiration of the CBA. And there it I is. I feel like the owners are just going to be like, enough is enough. We've tried to compromise, we've tried to cater to you. Yeah. But if you're not going to take anything, we're not even going to put anything on the table. Bring to us what you want, and we'll go from there. And, you know, maybe that's what the, P- the MLBPA wants. I don't know. But is at the same just time, be... the, owners could just, the owners could just be like, no, whatever it is, no. We're yeah, not going to accept it because we've already decided. that's how you negotiate. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so it's interesting that Ken Griffey Jr. was brought on to support Major League Baseball moving forward mm-hmm. as the special advisor or whatever the title they gave him. But the point is, is they got the player's player, right? They got the kid. They got the guy who is is in love with baseball, who has helped the whole world get fall back in love with baseball, you know? for uh-huh. Anyway, the point is, Major League Baseball has brought Ken Griffey Jr. on, and now it's going to be interesting to see if they kind of have an insider guy in Major League Baseball. Not that there other there aren't other baseball players advising Major League Baseball, right. but none is high profile, none is capable, none is influential as as the kid. That's what I think is interesting. It's true because every every guy on every roster pretty much looked up to him growing up. At Everybody least to some degree. That's right. So that's that's why I see this whole thing as wheeling and dealing. This is all politics. And it's it's really interesting that this development with Ken Griffey Jr. I think is the most interesting part so far in the drama that yeah, unfolds it, before us. <laughs> it's almost like having a mole in the in the commissioner's office, though. Like Ooh. for in our benefit, you know, like yes. he's gonna he's gonna go to Rob Manfred and be like, okay, now you need to market Mike Trout. You need to do more to get those guys' names out there. You need to be catering to young fans. Well, how'd you do it, Ken? Warm a hat backwards. Right. That's it. Wore my hat backwards and smiled. Hit home Did runs, an interview like, for anybody. Signed an autograph for anybody. Was available all the time. Mm-hmm. Put yeah. the game first. Put the fans first. Yes. Yep. Yeah, so mm. I, I do think there is a lot of good that could come from having Ken Griffey Jr. in the front office. Of oh, for Major sure. League baseball. Yes. A whole lot of good. The yeah, and, Major and League hopefully Baseball. It, <laughs> hopefully it does come... In the form of uh, of a collective bargaining agreement sooner than later. Yeah. Hopefully that's one of the benefits, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. It's going to be interesting. This next oh. year of baseball is going to be really interesting. <laughs> yeah. And, dude, I didn't even so. think about that. What? Because his role hasn't really been expressly defined. I wonder. It kind of makes you wonder, is he going to get brought in specifically to work as an interface with PA with the players association, just say, Hey, let's get in front of this CBA that's coming up. Let's talk now. I'm a player. I was on your side. I understand both sides. Now let's, what if that's his role is to get in front of this? It'd be really nice. It'd be really nice if it was really interesting. He's a guy who, 
he just wants baseball to be baseball. That's it. That's right. You know? Wow. That is a power move. I knew it was a power move, but I didn't realize it until just now when that thought crossed my mind. I had <laughs> I had an apostrophe. <laughs> Did lightning, lightning strike your brain? Strike my brain. <laughs> <laughs> you the man, Brad. You the man. That is one you of my favorite movies of all time. Don't a don't hook quote do it past me. Trust me. <laughs> don't tell anybody what it is. Baseball family, if you know what that is, if you file if you united with that quote the way Brad and I just did, you need to get in the comments section and tell us what it is. Voting starts now. Oh, and by the way, when we get done with this episode, we're dropping a big old fatty fat discount on the shop. But we forgot to tell you that already. But that's true. And ooh. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Ooh, you know, no, you know what? You know what they should do? They should send it to us in the mailbag. To enter send the us in the mailbag, which we'll talk yes. about more later. How about this? First person to send us the name of that, the the name of that film that quote comes from in the mailbag. The first one, stop what you're doing. Send us an email right now. Uh, we need a question for our mailbag episode that's coming up, and we need the name of that film, and you get a free something. Hey, there you go. I'll nice. send you a free something. I don't know what it is yet. We'll figure it out. Briggs giving stuff away. All right. Oh, oh man. I feel good. That's <laughs> it's like one of my favorite movies of all time. All right. Go ahead. Absolutely. Totally. Anyway, so <laughs> let's move on here because I, this next story cracked me up. Absolutely <laughs> cracked me up because Gary Sanchez was benched during the postseason last year. But then he's like, I don't know. I don't know why I'm not playing. It's like, dude, this is because you're terrible. And Brian, Brian Cashman comes out. This is what he said this week. I think the whole world knows why he was benched, and whether he was told directly or indirectly, I mean, the manager's card on a daily basis is a statement in its own right. You have to earn your keep. You got uh, you got to earn your way on the card and to stay on that card. Boom. Mic drop, Brian Cashman. It's the the droppiest or whatever. <laughs> it's amazing. It's like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Okay, if you weren't sure before, now you know. Uh-huh. Because you were not playing well. Like, well, I, you I love have a level of self awareness. Yeah, but I love know? that his answer is, "Are you kidding me? You need me to spell this out for you." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's you, exactly what it was. You already know, bro. Come on now. <laughs> and that he didn't even approach him in like the privateness of the clubhouse in spring training. No, didn't shoot him a text and be like, "Hey, man, this is if you're still unsure, this is why." It's like, no, he went to the media and said, "This yep. is why." If he can't figure it out. This is the answer that he deserves. And it is exactly the answer that he deserves if he yeah, couldn't figure he it did, out in time. He did it on Michael K's radio show, and it was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and it's to, so funny. And to Brian Cashman, ahead. I say, get after it, bud. And to Michael K, I say, bravo for bringing it up. <laughs> Seriously. Outstanding. For real. It's so, it's so good. And, you know, it. <laughs> I say I was gonna say I wish that there would be there were more guys who would do this, but it's not necessary because most yeah. guys understand why they're not playing. Yeah, you know, and <laughs> and I wonder if that's part of the reason if because we've heard we've seen rumors that Gary Sanchez was being shopped this off season, and I wonder if Brian Cashman is just fed up with the guy thinking that he's God's gift to baseball, right? And that he has a right to be on the field rather than it being a privilege, you know, rather than him earning his spot. I agree. I mean, am I the only one who gets that vibe from him? Nope. No, no, no. And and you know what? The Yankees are just political enough inside the clubhouse, I get the impression, that they'll be like, all right, you want to play this game? Shop him out. We what? We might pull yeah. the trigger. We might not. I don't know. But if the right deal came along, feel pretty good about it. We got we got Hagee right there, Kyle Higashioka. He's right there doing, mm-hmm. his, doing a great job. So, I mean – so the now right he's no Jorge Posada. The right pitcher comes along. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Hey, I mean Higashioka is no Jorge Posada, but he's a sure he sure is a step or two up from from freaking Gary Sanchez right now. I Woof. agree with you. I'm so and mad. I thought that for a while. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm and glad you, that you've come to the light side, Brig. Well, I took me plenty of time. I'll tell you. <laughs> but at the <laughs> at the same time, <laughs> it's just the right answer. <laughs> it is it's true for anybody who doesn't know there were there were a few years there 
or I would I would text Brig regular uh, text Brig links to highlights regularly of Gary Sanchez just not being a good catcher. Low, low I lights. I told him I said it's not that I don't. It's not that I don't like Gary Sanchez. It's that it hurts my eyes watching him play the catching position. So yeah, that's that's how I feel about Gary Sanchez. For anybody who doesn't know, reasonable. Okay, hoist the black flag. From bad Brad. players to good players. <laughs> Wait, the black flag. Okay, Rick. Let's go from <laughs> bad players to good players. Okay. okay. Yeah. So this week, next year's Hall of Fame ballot, like the newcomers, were announced. And it is a big old long list. Fierce. Big old long list of guys. It's huge. But let's just go through uh, Wait, some of hold the notables. On. Hold, whoa, whoa, what? hold on. Did I not yes. get what I wanted? Did I not ask Baseball Santa? Oh, you did. To have a zero class. I want no inductees in this class. That's what I asked for Christmas. For Baseball Santa. And I got it. Baseball Santa is real. Guys. Absolutely. Guys, it happened. <laughs> I got what I wanted. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody got in. Nobody got in this year. And it's because of that, let's actually skip ahead for just a second. Because because of that, Kurt Schilling has formally requested that his name be taken off the ballot for next year. That's right. He doesn't want to have anything to do with the Hall of Fame voting. He said, I'm going to leave it up to the Veterans Committee because they understand talent. Listen, like, it's not the Veterans okay. Committee. It, it's the Culture Club. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they call it whatever they want, but we all know it's the Culture Club. It is, you know, and it is a rotating group of people, but it is the culture club. It, it's that's really what for it is. sure. It's like that that's popular group of kids in high school that wouldn't let you come to their party. We're like, is he cool? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Does he sell weed? I don't know. Well, he can come. <laughs> He's not allowed, but everybody else can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the culture club. It is. It is the culture club. Absolutely, that is the perfect way to describe it. Um, they are the gatekeepers. Yeah. Okay. So let's go back to the Hall of Fame ballot. Okay. Notable. So there, were, like I said, it was like super duper long. We went through and just picked out a few guys who we think are notable on there. We had Alex Rodriguez, David Ortiz, Jimmy Rollins, Mark Teixeira, Justin Morneau, Tim Lincecum, Jonathan Papelbon, and Ryan Howard. Yeah. Uh, those are just a few guys who I just kind of cherry picked out the list. Yeah. Uh, because I thought they were interesting. Ryan Howard had a heck of a run for what, like three, four years, something like that. Yeah. And then fell off the face of the earth. Don't even remember. I believe is what happened. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know what happened to the guy. But no, it's like man, this guy's MVP. He's on the cover of MLB The Show, <laughs> which we'll get into in a little bit. Yeah. And <laughs> and then all of a sudden it's like, did he retire? No, he's still playing. Oh my gosh. I Seriously? wonder. <laughs> I don't know if you would call that Ryan Howarding or Chris Davising. Ooh. Chris like Davising might be too like far. Ryan Howard happened first. Well, yes. Ryan Howard happened first, but Chris Davis happened at like such a astounding level that yeah. I wonder if he would be like the blitz, you know? Right. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't I mean, I don't think that he's gonna get in just because it was such a sh- his peak was so small. It was so great, but it was so small. Right. I don't think that he'll get in, but he's an interesting guy to see on there. Um another guy is Tim Lincecum. Yeah. I mean how many Cy Youngs did that dude win? All of them. It's like, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> I want to say it's like, what, two or three? He won a bunch. Has a World Series title. And then injuries piled up, just like a lot of scouts said they would. But he was incredibly effective when he was able to play. Yeah. So I'm curious what's going to happen with him. Um, Alex Rodriguez, unless there is a massive paradigm shift with Hall of Fame voting, Alex Rodriguez will never get in. Culture Club. Ever. I mean, unless this whole PR <laughs> tour that he's on. He's on know, PR tour. Engaged to J-Lo. And, yeah. And. Best analyst and in baseball. Play by play and everything. Yeah. Yeah. So, he's he's going to be so interesting to watch. Just to see what people really think about that guy. You know? Like, because theoretically, he should get zero votes. Based on what. Agreed what has been going on up to this point. <clears throat> but if he's on the ballot for five, six years, well, he might get in. Look, he's going to get votes. Look, Kurt, or, uh, freak. The Rockets getting votes. You know what I'm saying? Yes, Barry Bonds Roger getting Clemens votes. Barry Bonds. 
So he, but Barry Bonds never tested positive. So there are some people who argue that he didn't actually use steroids; that he was accused of it, right? But he never actually used because he never tested positive. Well, and I don't think Roger Clemens did either, did he? No, no. It was just his trainer came out and said that he injected him. That's right. So with no positive test, there are people who say, you know, no positive test, you can't prove that they did. Right. However, Alex Rodriguez was sten- was suspended for an entire season. For sure. <laughs> they tried to suspend him for even longer because of his role with Biogenesis. That's right. Yep. So, I mean, he'll get votes. There though. is like multiple smoking guns with him. <laughs> he'll get votes. He shouldn't, but he will. You just wait. He will. And everybody's going to say, well, no, his time in Seattle, you know, and that's fine, but you can't have that's too short. That's not enough time. It is too short. It's like it was like five, six years. Yeah, it was five. I think it was five. Um, but yeah, ninety six to oh one. Yeah, it's just not was, enough. Was a Rod A Rod really playing in Seattle? That's too short to vote well, somebody into the hall. And he was terrific. You're not even eligible at that point. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm he saying. If you're going to lop it off from the positive test, the one hundred percent positive test, dude, it's going to be really interesting coming up in the next handful of years. Like yeah. it's going to get ugly. Ooh, it is. And here's another guy who's going to be really interesting to see is David Ortiz. Yes. Okay. Ooh. Everybody loves David Ortiz. Everybody, everybody loves yes. Big Poppy. His bigness, if you His will. His bigness is right. But here's the thing: yes. he has a positive steroid. He test. does. But on the other hand, we do know there was a handful of false positives in that batch. Yeah, that he was in that, like in that list that he was named. Yeah, in. and he fought tooth and nail that it was a false positive. So, oh. who do you believe? In the words of Lisa Kudrow on EZA, who do you believe? Who would you believe? Who would you believe? <laughs> Have a nice day. Lisa Kudrow is so good. Um, <laughs> no, David Ortiz is like everybody's so, favorite Puerto Rican, man. He's <laughs> <laughs> Dominican. Oh, Dominican. Oh, man. We got to bleep that. Shoot. He is Dominican, isn't he? Dang it. Sorry, Poppy. Dominican. Your bigness. I didn't mean that. Oh, oh I feel so bad. I'm also a little anyway. bit afraid for my <laughs> life, <laughs> but the, I saw what he did to that call box. <laughs> anyway, the point is, <laughs> no, no, I just love the guy. I think he's terrific. But and 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 again, if it's one time, if it's a possible possible false positive, if he's fought it tooth and nail, if he has supporting people and documentation, and everything which he says he does, and has proven, I don't know. That's a tough one. That's tough. But again, this is why A Rod is going on his Hall of Fame, like everybody loved me career run, like campaign. Yeah, his campaign. Yeah, because 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 he's like he he wants the love David Ortiz is getting. So people like yeah, yeah. Because look at us waffle. We're like well, (laughs) well, but we love his bigness. (laughs) The problem that A Rod has is that nobody liked him when he was playing. No, yeah, no. Everybody liked Poppy when he was playing. Everybody likes A Rod now. And, but everybody continues to love Poppy. Yeah. So it's like, you know, like A Rod's a little bit backwards with it. You know, it's a, he's a little bit late to the party. Yeah. But Poppy's had it going for him for years. Yeah, now. you're right. So. <laughs> what about what? I don't, know, I don't know. Well, whatever. So okay, okay, we got to move on because we got to get to this interview, right? So. Yeah. MLB The Show, the new cover athlete has been announced for MLB The Show. And we you you kind of touched on this earlier, but we this mm-hmm. April 20th, 2021, they're going to release it and it's Fernando Tatis Jr. <laughs> now, Brad, Sony knows what they're doing releasing that on April 20th. E- for by the way. real <laughs> They know people are going to be home. Yeah, you're right. To play video games. Not just home and not just playing video games, but hoping baseball season will begin at the same time. Smart. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here's the deal. Yep. There's like this thing happening where you don't get on the cover of a video game because it's bad. Well, it's only Madden. It's only Madden. Yeah, but it's still happening. I don't think it's happened with the show, though. Who's the dude you just talked about? Um... Oh, just lost. Didn't you just bring up a dude? No, he was uh, on the cover of a magazine. Never mind. Ryan Howard. Ryan Howard was on the cover of the show, but he was still good for a couple of years. Because the Madden curse is something completely different, where guys either get injured, like grossly injured, yeah. 
or they had just have a flat out terrible year and it's only for the year that they're on the cover. I don't feel like there's, well, I don't know. Cause what year did David Wright get hurt? Because he was on the cover in 07. Yeah, I don't think it's a good thing, man. I'm just telling you. Okay. Hmm. But I will say this though. Um, Damian Lillard's on the cover of NBA 2K21, yeah. and he's having a great year. Well, I mean, that's exciting. So, the 2K curse doesn't apply. I don't know that the show curse is necessarily going to be a thing. Yeah, I don't know. So, I mean, I don't know. I'm going to look it up right now. I'm look- I should have looked this up before. I apologize, <laughs> but I'm going to look it up right now. No, you're fine. Um, so... This so this is something I do want to touch on that with this though is this is actually very exciting because we've talked about the show before you talked about how you had RBI baseball and yeah. it was good it was all right but the show is like the standard for baseball video yeah. games and I have even gone on the record on this podcast saying you know what my next system is going to be a PS5 because I want to play right. the show well guess what I don't have to get a PS5 anymore I can keep my Xbox One and get the show because guess what people it's going to be on Xbox oh, One oh it's the it's best it's not going to be a PlayStation exclusive anymore it's coming to Xbox One. Oh, oh it's the best expect video game content oh yes. for sure dude I'm going to get that crap so hard for sure are you kidding me because it's the same with me <laughs> I just have so Xbox excited. and I'm like no but I had to play Red <laughs> Dead you know I just had to oh man yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I found a list. I found a list of okay. uh, MLB video games cover athletes. You, re- you ready for this? I am. Okay. All right. It is in 1998. You ready for this? Bernie Williams. Not okay. a bad ch- choice. Okay. Now, 1999, MLB 1999, Cal Ripken Jr. Pretty good. Now, 2000, Mo Vaughn, 2001, Chipper Jones. 2002, Andrew Jones. Oh, man, both Atlanta Braves. 2003, Barry Bonds. 2004, Sean Green. 2005, Eric Chavez. 2006, Vlad Guerrero, senior. Can't go wrong with that Can't one. go wrong. Now, right. that, was predecessor, that was the predecessor of the show. You get into the show, which right. began in 06... And we've got his bigness. Okay. And then Chan Ho mm-hmm. Park in 2006. David Wright in 2007. Ryan Howard, 08. Dustin mm-hmm. Pedroia, 09. Joe Maurer, 2010 and 11. Figure that out. Um, A catcher. How about you that? You know what I'm saying. Uh, 2012, Adrian Gonzalez, Jose Bautista. Three cover athletes for MLB 13, the show. And that was Kutch, Andrew McCutcheon, Jose Bautista, back-to-back, and Wei Yin Chen. They did four cover athletes in 2014. What is happening? Um, Miguel Cabrera, (laughs) Brett Lowry, Shinsu Chu, and Wei Yin Chen again back-to-back. My goodness. 2015, Yasiel Puig, Russell Martin, Sinsu Chu, Russell Martin, and then Wei Yin Chen. And then MLB The Show 16, Josh Donaldson, Jung Ho Kong. Man, they must be releasing this in Korea. Yeah, they are. Oh, I see. I was, uh, was going to say, yeah, it's it's a regional, a regional it release is. because in 2018, Marcus Stroman was on the That's Canadian right. release. And Aaron Judge and Aaron was on Judge the standard on the, release. Yeah, release. yeah. Okay, 2019. Yeah. All three standard, though. Oh, 2019, Bryce Harper. 2020, Javi Baez. 2021, Fernando Tatis Jr. Okay, all right. I think we have proven that Brad is right, and there is no curse. (laughs) Okay. I think what it is, is rather than being a curse, it's natural, 100% natural athlete decline. Is that you get, typically you get on the cover at your peak, And then you just start to decline after that. That makes sense. Fortunately for Fernando Tatis Jr., he's beginning to peak very early, and Sony has noticed this, and that's why they've gotten him on. And it's not just his ability. It's the fact that he's electric. He's electric. He's fun to watch. I mean, I I am a huge fan of Fernando Tatis. So he fits the mold of somebody who's appealing to younger fans and that's what the MLB the show is and this could not have come at a better time honestly 
to have this guy on the cover of a video game and a guy who actually plays the game. Yeah, right. Like, that, that's a big deal. That's a yeah, really big deal. Yeah, because he does play the video game. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's it's going to lead to more kids wanting to play the video game and they'll see him and I'm I'm sure they're going to put like some of those bat flips and things in there because yeah, they have to. They of have course, to you got to in order to make the game entertaining. Yeah. And it's going to make more kids want to play baseball and watch baseball. Well, so. and you add that to Nickelodeon. Come on now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's get Nickelodeon on board. Let's make a phone call. Just do it. <clears throat> Call, anyways, call Griffey. Let's go ahead and take a short break. When we get <laughs> back, there we go. Call mm. Griffey. When we get back from our break, we have our interview with, as we mentioned before, Alan Snyder. Enjoy it. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jack. I don't care if I never get back with me. Root, root, root for the home to stay. Don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. Shop kids baseball strips. At nineplusss.com. Welcome back, baseball family. We are so excited to bring you another one of our interviews. We have a guest today. Alan Snyder is with us. He's in the house. Alan, how are you? I'm doing so well. Thank you for having me on the show. You're welcome. And for those of you not watching the YouTube channel and listening on the audio, uh, he's an O's fan. He's wearing his Orioles oh, T-shirt. Oh, <laughs> baby. I got my Orioles shirt on. I got my Orioles hat on with my yeah. two, 2012 postseason stamp on it. doesn't even say wild card or winner. It just says postseason. <laughs> just keep it. Just try to keep it as close as possible. So we're going to kick this off with uh, what we do every time. We're going to do our rundown, and we're going to see if Alan gets caught in the rundown. And then uh, we'll take a quick break, and then we'll jump back into more conversation. So, Alan, first question we ask everybody on the show. What is your quest? What is my quest? My quest is to make the world a better place, one laugh at a time, one smile. I told you I am a doctor of physical therapy. I know I'm a doctor, surprisingly, with a stash and everything. But honestly, this world has problems. I don't care what side of the wall you're on, what you're doing. I try to live every day to the fullest, you know, one of those, not a glass half empty, make people smile, help people in this world. If we all paid it forward just a little bit more, the world would be a better place. Nice. I like yeah. that. Awesome. That's a great quest. So Alan, what is your favorite color? Oh my God. Lime green. Oh, don't get me started. I don't know if you can <laughs> see my, I'm not a gamer by any stretch, but watching the video, you can see I have this lime green chair. If I showed you, like, if I took the computer in the other room and you saw my my place, there's a lot of lime green. It is silly. My tennis shoes, I have a, I have a shirts, I have my work stuff. I made my whole business plan around the color lime green. Amazing. <laughs> you know, it's gotten me this I picked, far. I picked up on that listening to your podcast, and we'll get into that a little bit later. But uh, next question, if you could have any piece of baseball memorabilia, what would it be? I would have the 2021 World Series Baltimore Orioles trophy. That's what I would want. <laughs> now, I mean, I can, I'm just saying, like, something that hasn't happened in a while, something that hasn't happened in my lifetime for baseball Ooh. trivia. I'm not one of those guys with, like, signatures or autographs. When I meet a person that's famous, a lot of times I'll just kind of, like, say what's up, tell them I'm a fan. I'm not a, that type of a memorabilia type of guy. Like, I have a... Uh, and I'm from Baltimore, so I have like a Ravens helmet. Like it's not signed by anybody. It's fine. I have jerseys and stuff. I would want something in the future. I work in healthcare. I don't ever want to work for the Orioles. But if there was like a <laughs> World Series ring or something like that, I would want to earn it though. I would not want to buy it. I'm not a buy sports memorabilia type of guy. That's my own personal craziness. No, that's awesome. That's good. Maybe you never had anybody missed. answer in the future though. That's that's unique. <laughs> That's original, but it's also yeah. not real. So maybe I should have said like 2027 or something. Something in my <laughs> lifetime would have been preferred. 
<laughs> you don't have to be realistic with hopes and dreams, Alan. Come on. Wait, seven years is not realistic for any team? <laughs> no, it is. I'm saying you don't have to be realistic. Well, I'm clearly not if I want the Orioles to win the World Series, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, speaking of the Orioles, let's let's stick with the Orioles for a minute. If they were a drink, what would they be? Oh, so being from Baltimore, this is an easy one because we have a signature drink there. It's called an orange crush. It's essentially orange juice there's vodka i think they put some orange soda in it maybe some sprite and then you could even make it into something called a whipped crush where you add whipped cream flavored vodka or something so like that's one of our signature drinks <laughs> what would they be they'd be we actually have a signature beer which is something i wanted to share with you guys is because if you go to baltimore to the stadium to the city the signature beer is something called Natty Bow, and I don't know if you guys have ever heard of that. Natural Bohemian beer is the signature beer of the Baltimore town, and I picked one up the last time I was home because it's pretty cheesy here. Mr. Bow is on the can. <laughs> Natural Bohemian. Now, it's football season, so this is obviously Ravens colors. It says take it to the house because Natural Bohemian beer, which is absolute terrible terrible beer you get like a 24 pack for 12.99 is brewed in wisconsin so why is it a baltimore beer i have no idea but at the stadium there's always a guy walking around who's like natty boo who wants a natty boo and you drink it because that's what you do but it's absolute swill it's terrible i'll be drinking i'll be drinking that for the show you're right I'm glad you saved it for this. That's amazing. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, where's somewhere in – no, I'm going to skip that one. If That's you could funny. design your own baseball-scented candle, what would it be the aroma? I know it would be lime green, but what would the aroma be? Well, that would mess with me. I couldn't have a lime green <laughs> color and then have it completely not match. Ah, but as, yes. as far as the scent goes – when it you're talking about baseball, there's nothing better than the smell of a new glove. I know that's I'm sure you've definitely heard that one on the show before. That's not going to be original because you don't want it to be the scent of like new cleats or a jock strap or something. But <laughs> like, like a, a new baseball, I guess, has this more of a smell, but there is nothing like a new glove. I've played my whole life that the oil, the smell of that leather. I mean, I'm definitely not a person who is in the field and, you know, you know, I've been out and then I'll smell it. It's actually, yeah, I, that's probably a cliche answer, but. It's like the old debate between what's better, the sound of the crack of the glove or the crack of the ball on the bat, and you can go yeah. back and forth, but there's no yeah. other right answer when it comes to baseball. The smell of the glove is by far the best. It really is. Bingo. Like Every time, yeah. every year I get my glove out, the first thing I do is smell it. It's the very first thing mm -hmm. I do. I love it. And I used to, every time I was running out in the field, stick my face in it just to smell it. Even like mm -hmm. as a catcher, I'd stick it straight over my mask and just get a big old whiff. Yeah. No, I, yeah. that's a great answer. That's that, that is, is great that's answer. let me rephrase. That's the correct answer. It is. I mean, <laughs> what's I, I haven't heard a better answer than that. Like it's no at a baseball stadium. I don't know if there's any more smells I want to have. <laughs> there's a lot of options. Not all of them are great. It's true. Nice. <laughs> all right. What's one thing on your baseball bucket list? My so like every dude in this world, I do a baseball trip with my guys. It's uh, it's the Jewish law firm of Snyder, Goldstein, Rosenberg, and Friedman. Uh, none of us are actual lawyers, but if I told you that those were the four people on a baseball trip, you'd be like, which law firm sponsored this? So we do a trip around, and we've been to many of the stadiums, some old, some new, and the plan for the last four years was Tokyo 2020, and we have been talking about doing that, and obviously. Before it didn't happen, two of the guys bailed on the trips because their wives didn't want to go. And I was like, well, who cares about them? <laughs> so as it's funny because as we started looking into baseball Olympics, it got real tricky with costs, with getting tickets. Somebody said, you know what would be actually cooler? Why don't we just go do a Japanese baseball stadium tour? And I was like, I will see the Hiroshima Carp any day of the week. Like, that sounds like it would be way more fun, actually, because we haven't been to spring training, but we can do that. We haven't been to some of the stadiums, but we can do that. I think Japanese Baseball League would be like the once in a lifetime. Like, I'm not going to go do it a second time. So I, that is probably my bucket list. That is something that has to happen before I kick the bucket. Yes. Wow, nice. that's terrific. Uh, what is the name of your autobiography? My autobiography would be like, what would you just say? 
you know, <laughs> you know, with like a question, an exclamation, a question. I, I really like that punctuation, completely incorrect, because I kind of live my life in that zone of like a question. No, no, no. He meant to say that. But did he? You know, I, <laughs> I have to be professional with what I do. And I, I am always smiles. I've been in like one fist fight my whole life when I was 10. I'm always about love. I'm always about smiles. But the shock value is really high up there for me, too. And I am that guy who just always – I say what I'm thinking as long as it's good intentions. I'm never trying to hurt somebody, although I may some say something that is offensive. Of course, 2020, got to be real careful what you say. And sometimes I put my foot in my mouth. But that's kind of one of those things where I'm with my friends and, you know, I snap people's heads very frequently. And I'm the guy who's jovial and – you know, in the sport, I played sports my whole life, and I'm not always the best player on the team, but as long as you're good enough and you bring something to the table as far as making it more fun for other people, you'll always have friends. You'll always have something to do. And I've never really thought that out loud, but yeah, what what you just say? Yeah, I like that. That's good. That's good. I, good. I like that. Yeah. All right, Alan, I've got to know, what's wrong with Joe Buck? I actually don't hate Joe Buck as some as much as some people. Uh, I get it. I get it. Like he grew up. Here's the thing. What is wrong with him? I was really getting annoyed at what was his hair last year or the teeth or did he do facial hair? You know, but that man works hard. I get it. He grew up or it was gifted to him. He had the dad. He The dad had the voice. The dad is one of the most famous people to ever call a game. He was just given everything. But that man works hard. That man is very good at what he does. I could do with less the, the football stuff where he's the Cowboys and I want to know what his real voice sounds like because you know there's no way he goes home to his wife and he's like, what's for dinner tonight, honey? Like, there's no <laughs> way he talks to her. You know, I'm a big fan of the UFC, and you know, Bruce Buffer calls the UFC and is like, it's time. I, he has his own podcast. He sounds nothing like that. Not even close to it. His voice is actually pretty raspy. I have a feeling mm. Joe Buck's real. Like Bob Costas, I bet you he is that way all day, every day. Yeah, yeah, that's probably true. You know, Bob Costa sounds like he does, and, you know, I'll ever have a place in my heart with his pink eye situation of 2010 <laughs> or whenever that was. That yeah, was great. 12, yeah. But as far as Joe Buck goes, he's doing it, man, and I really do appreciate how hard that man works. I don't have a lot of problems with him because there's not many other sports announcers that I would be like, I would rather see that person calling every Cowboys game with Troy Aikman. Like, I think he does a good job. I really do. Brad, what is your problem with Joe Buck? I don't have a problem with Joe Buck. I'm doing an investigation to find out what people do have a problem with Joe Buck. <laughs> oh, it, it's just it's jealousy. It's, it's absolutely jealousy. <laughs> it has to and, be. That's the only conclusion I came to. Yeah, and like, look, you guys have a podcast. People don't realize how hard it is to talk, to keep the game going. You know, who was that guy, the, the, the guy who got fired this past year, the Cincinnati guy, or he was calling oh, the Kansas yeah. City game? Yeah. To his oh, credit, yeah. that guy didn't miss a beat. He was yeah. apologizing. <laughs> I am so sorry. And it's a long fly ball. That is hard to do. That is a really yeah. hard thing to do. Calling a baseball game, especially being the play-by-play um, same thing. Like, what, what's the baseball show with Hank Azaria? I don't know. If I was you guys just gonna say, it's a very bar, Brock a very Meyer. Brock Meyer Brock moment. Meyer, yeah. That yeah. that opening scene. <laughs> wow, that is the funniest thing that's ever been done in the history of anything. Do you know how hard that is to do? Where you're telling this story and painting a picture and spilling your heart out. I mean, Brock Meyer, God bless. I didn't. I thought the rest of the show went downhill, but that's neither here nor there. Yeah, yeah that, 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 that first, first episode is life changing. Oh yeah, that God. first five minutes is the very was the very best part of the series. I've I was, watched I was that crying, over and over again. Crying yeah. last so funny. Was so <laughs> yeah. yeah, I kept waiting for another moment like that, but it never came. No, I gave up after the first season. I couldn't do it. But, yeah. All right, so this age old question for us: What's your go to fourth inning snack? I, you know, I'm a sucker as far as the uh, wherever I'm at. <laughs> Whatever stadium I'm at, like I'm not a big snack guy. To be honest, I'm usually drinking my calories. But if I'm going to get <laughs> get a snack or a food, I'm that sucker, who, especially nowadays with, with smartphones. You can just Google where the food is, excuse me, what the signature food of, of the stadium is. And I'm like going to go get whatever they offer at that stadium just because you're there YOLO. Uh, do we still say YOLO? I guess we still say YOLO. We do. We're saying it now. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, look, I've been out, I've been out to Seattle before I've been to, I guess it was, it was safe go at the time. I had an Ichiro. roll. Why not? I, you know, you're there. Yeah. I'm not going to be back there any other time. Why not? So if I'm going to have a snack, uh, I guess, 
In Baltimore, around Camden Yards, which I don't know if you guys have been to, there is a million people outside selling a million different things, and you can bring it all into the stadium. You show up with a $20 bill and a shopping bag, and you just fill it up with <laughs> peanuts and anything you want, just no glass. And I guess I'll go with the like peanuts if I'm doing a stadium that I've been to a million times and I can bring it there. I guess I'm a sunflower seed guy too. But if I'm at a stadium or somewhere I've never been, I'm going to opt for – you know, whatever the stupid thing they're offering that's overpriced. Like, I've had a Dodger <laughs> dog. It was horrible, but I did it. Yeah. You yeah, got to do it. That's, that's like right. what that, uh, on the vein of the Dodger dog, that's like what Jerry Seinfeld says. He's like, the line between sucks and great is so thin. It's like, the dog, the dog <laughs> is overcooked. It's been boiling for hours. The The bun is stale. Did it suck? But it wasn't great. Yeah, it was great. You know, so I've been to, so I've been actually to Dodger Stadium twice. At the second time, my friends who had never been were like, "We're getting Dodger dogs." I was like, "I'm <laughs> getting pizza." I already suffered with that thing last time. <laughs> been awesome. there, done that. All right, our last question for this rundown: What is the square root of Chris Davis? God, overpaid. However much that is. <laughs> the square wait wait uh, wait do i have a chance of doing k Chris davis or are we talking about crush chris davis like my guy your guy chris your davis guy. the c uh, the square root whatever he was taking that was helping him i don't know that was <laughs> oh that guy is like built for quadruple a baseball and then he started <laughs> taking something and then he was in fuego for t- two years in a three-year span because there was that middle year where nothing happened but it was yeah. it was great, man. It was oh my god! I would give my firstborn for seven more Chris Davises in twenty fourteen. <laughs> yeah, he uh, he got popped for Adderall, and I was like, I was defending him. I was like, the dude's got ADD. Give it like give it to him. And then it turns out that not really that it was helping him. So I was like, oh yeah, no. But I totally yeah. get what you're saying with the four A baseball. I was I'm a I was a big Mike Zunino fan when he was in Seattle, and I was like, he mm-hmm. is a great. He is a four A All Star. 4A All-Star, but he can't make it the bigs. And that's what Chris Davis has turned into. Uh, yep. We still had those years, though. And, oh, my God, they were great. I I don't know your guys' history as much, but just for us, I mean, I, I'm sure we'll get into it. But the joy that I had for those couple of years, and I, I guess we didn't really even talk about it, but I live in New York City. Like, I'm on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. I go to more Yankee games than anything else, and to go to Yankee Stadium and to just celebrate Oriole home runs is like nothing else. I mean, it, it's beautiful. <laughs> 27 World Series. Yeah. Guess what? Home run. How you doing? Say hi to your mother for me. <laughs> Say hi to your mother. All right, with that baseball family, we're going to take a break, and then we're coming right back, and we're going to have more conversation with Alan. Be right back with you. No matter which ballpark you're at, you want to rep your team. Now you can with 9 Plus Us. Welcome to the Big City Series. With every design available in your team's colors, you can fit in with the home crowd or stand out on the road. Either way, we have the colors you crave. Shop the Big City Series and find designs that rep your favorite baseball podcast, cheer from the cheap seats, and much more. Drop the Big City Series only at 9plusus.com. I got thinking as we as we were inviting Alan on the podcast, I was like, you know what? I'm a Mariners fan, a perennial basement dweller, terrible team. Alan is a fan of the Orioles, as we've already established. Very familiar lifestyle, right? Yeah, I, I would actually go as far as to say that ours has been a little rougher or more rough. Again, I don't really know your history as like I just feel like you guys have been in contention every so often, and you've had a couple Hall of Famers come through at least in my lifetime. And correct mm-hmm. me if I'm wrong, do you still hold the record for most wins in a season, or did that get passed? We do, yeah, for that's, now until the Cubs or the Dodgers come around, right, and that's within our lifetimes. That is awesome mm-hmm. like that is something that you know what it didn't happen but he, that is great do you know that the orioles won a world series a month before i was born like oh God. A, <laughs> a month before i was born oh, and most of my life has been this torturous thing i mean if you want to really put the icing on the cake is we also had a team called the baltimore ravens that moved out of baltimore in the middle of the night three months after i was born so like my, i personally feel responsible for baltimore sports history like sorry guys <laughs> it happened it's, it's just one of those things where look this is a baseball show and we're talking baseball okay but 
as somebody that is born and raised in Baltimore, I've won two Super Bowls as a Baltimore Ravens fan. I've won a Stanley Cup as a Washington Capitals fan. And my freshman year at the University of Maryland, we won March Madness. I would trade all four of those championships for the Orioles to get to the World Series, even if they got swept. <laughs> I would gladly trade those four things because that is my team and i don't care what you say every year we were in first place for the first game sometimes and it may be even for the second game and i just want that to actually carry through and get somewhere i i hear every single word that you just said i'm a seahawks fan like your your lime lime green chair actually speaks to me for that reason i respect like, that i think it's awesome but uh but yeah no i would trade the seahawks super bowl for the mariners just getting to the world series okay all right like, just Are you going to root for the there. Kraken I, when yeah. they come too, or no? I don't know. You know, I mean, I'm I'm in Phoenix now. I'm trying to decide if I want to stick with everything Northwest and go with the Kraken, or if I should stay local. As far as like, because I haven't really been right. a hockey fan. You know, I'm I might go with the Coyotes, but I just I just don't know. I might have a better chance root, uh, being a Kraken. You can't fan take a team because you, a you care fan. about them. I just know for me, like I love the Capitals because they played in Maryland. Now I've had this conversation where somebody yeah. said, if Baltimore proper got a hockey team, I said wouldn't care less. That's not my team. I have, I'm a, a Caps yeah. fan, so you kind of have the option right now of, of picking. But yeah, and that and that's the thing. That's I've been waiting to, to kind of figure it out. I don't know the Kraken. That's a sweet sweet moniker, and they have an awesome logo. It's pretty great too, like. Like, Brig and I chose a KBO team this season just because that was the only baseball we had at the time. Mm -hmm. I chose the Dinos because of the moniker. You know? Like, I feel like Kraken's I kind mean, of the same way. I, you said you listen to my podcast where I talk a lot about craft beer. I pick craft yeah. beer based on the, the labels these days. Like The, the, the colorful labels. The, yeah. the colorful <laughs> labels are pretty much how you pick certain things these days. And I need to crack yeah. one right now. And I, I told you I got something special for today's show. The Orioles don't have a specific – uh beer but i was home for the holidays and i went to a craft beer place and they had this thing called birdhouse pale ale and i was like yeah oh, i'm getting that for this baseball show does this have anything yes. to do with the orioles absolutely not but does it have orioles does it say birds on it does it have orange and black absolutely <laughs> release the crack and cheers to you guys thanks for having me on the show Dilly dilly, my friend. Dilly dilly. That's awesome. <laughs> Sorry, Brad. Where's your bang? But we have. <laughs> oh, I'm actually out of bangs right now. I'm drinking a Diet Dew tonight. Uh, oh, at least Diet going, Dew. Going lightweight. Wow, going lightweight wow. tonight. Yeah, no, look. Here's but. the thing, guys. For me, my birthday, which just passed, happy birthday, Alan. Thank you. Was. Happy birthday, happy birthday Alan. November 25th. And the only thing I ever wanted for my birthday was taking your friends to the stadium all my friends had it kids with like june birthdays is you get like five or six people together you go to the orioles you sit upstairs who cares pick a giveaway day yeah. the orioles don't play in october usually let alone a game ever in november <laughs> like i just wanted something like that to celebrate so much i sound so pathetic right now like oh my god this poor kid he's gonna kill himself because the orioles are nothing good <laughs> the truth is is like I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bro. Like I never understood the term bro. It's basically somebody who says bro or does whatever. But for me, I love baseball. Baseball is the most beautiful sport. I watch more sports than I feel comfortable telling you guys about, including ultimate fighting, which I mentioned. But the truth is, is it's a guy who throws it and the guy who swings the bat. And if that's what you're watching, you're not watching the game because so many more things are, are happening. You know, when I meet somebody who doesn't know baseball and I'm telling them about, it, I'm like, watch where the catcher is putting his glove watch where the ball goes and immediately they're like oh so there's more that's happening i'm like there is you know football hockey basketball they are what they are baseball is the hardest sport to win and anybody maybe we'll just throw out a hypothetical of ken griffey jr you can't buy a world series you it is a team sport and is very hard to do i think baseball is the best sport it's harder to follow because there's 162 games other than this year. Football, you get hot for a couple of weeks and, you know, bing, bang, boom, Russ Wilson wins another Super Bowl, right? Yep. Yep. That's what I'm counting on. Absolutely. But, no, as, as far as what you're talking about, though, with you can't buy a World Series, I mean, if that was the case, the Mariners would have won four in the 90s. Yeah. I mean, you you had you had Junior, you had Edgar, you had Randy Johnson, and Jay Buhner as your, supporting, as your fourth supporting player. Like, they would have won at least four World Series, and I have no doubt about that. Instead, you've got the Orioles, who actually, what, went to the ALCS twice. in 97? Yeah, it was back-to-back. -back. Yeah, twice. So, 
And and I think I feel like that's another team who's who's not ever going to buy a World Series. And on the other hand, you've got Brig, whose team every year is attempting to buy a World Series. Am I yep, right? And it still isn't working. But it doesn't so matter. They just buy keep spending one. money. It doesn't <laughs> so, matter. Yeah. They're going to do what they're going to do. There's so many things that yep. have to happen. And it's so beautiful that when you look at the team salaries every year, and you can just go to the bottom. I mean, Kansas City, Tampa, Miami, they compete. Not every year. Before the season no. starts, you can make a list, right? You know it's going to be Yankees, Red Sox, Dodgers, Cubs, Phillies, you think. It, but you know what? You think. You, you think. <laughs> My, yeah. be, my best friend's a Philly guy, and I don't even think they made the playoffs this year, which was befuddling. But it's no, like right. baseball, it's not guaranteed. And there's so many things that have to go into it. And I, I think it's one of the harder ones to win. It really is. I think you hit the nail on the head. Yeah, it, it is the it, hardest one to win. That's amazing. Yeah, and that is what that's what makes it the best sport. I think you're totally right on that. And it's it's fantastic. Every It doesn't matter who your team is. You can go in every year with hope. Even though you know, being the fan of a small market team or a historically bad team, you don't really, you know, you're not going to get to the top, but you have a chance to. And you don't know if, like you said, something happens to somebody and you, and you get you get hot when you need to. Maybe you get hot in July, August. You know, you make that run and you, you're in contention in September. That's, that's all you need. That's all you need to be in contention in September. It's amazing. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, if they're going to keep doing eight teams every year, it's going to happen. But uh, you guys probably know better than me, but the teams that made it to the Final Four this year, I mean, there wasn't an eight seed that snuck in there, right? Weren't they all pretty much the top seeds anyway? Uh, Uh, The Final Four, I mean, you had the Astros who were under 500. Um, But it was not bottom of the barrel, though. It was some middle seeds, but not not bottom of the barrel. Like eight seed never made it up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think the final four, it was, I mean, it was the Dodgers and Braves. I think they were 1 2 yep. in the NL. Mm-hmm. And then you had the Rays and the yeah, and the Astros, and that was 1 8. But the Astros, I mean, they're, let's be real, they're not really. Wait, they were the eight seed? seed? They, yeah, they, they got in, they were like, what, 21 or 29? I thought 31? they were seven. Were they, were they eight? 32? They were the only AL team under 500. So okay. they had to have been. Yeah, eight. you're right. right. You're... Oh, no. No, they technically weren't because they were the second place team in. The West. That's why they got it. Right. So yeah, no, they. You're right. They weren't. No. They were like the sixth seed. They were just by yeah, by the rule. But but, but in a shortened though, season, I, I, I don't. Think I didn't it would've... look at them. As I think it was just because team. of the 2020 shortened season. I think if that was if you yeah. expanded, you can't you can't do that. It, it, but also, everything yeah. coming into this season yeah. was not the way it should have gone down. And I don't want to get into that. But like, it was a different year for the Astros. If it would have been any other team, maybe you could make a little exception. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think they got. Off, that's what I was gonna say. I think they got off to a soft, uh, like a really slow start, and that's why it was right. the way it was with them. Yeah. That yeah, I, I didn't treat them like an under five hundred team, though, just because yeah. they're who I don't they think are. You can good team, really good yeah. team, cheaters, but good team. So, yes, but Alan, we've got we got about okay. five minutes here, so I just wanted to ask you ask you one thing. What do you think it is that the Orioles need to do to, I guess, take. Take this. He I wanted guess, to say the next step, the next but he step was like, winning. they're not know. even on that step. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> they're not on the first step. <laughs> to get to the first step of winning, do you think, what do you think is holding them back? Is it, are they, I don't even know how big the Baltimore market is. I have no clue. Like, I've never been to that part of the country. Oh, you're, you're missing out. Best so sta- one of the best of stadiums, my, my man. You got to get out there. Yeah, we got to go. It's on it's the beautiful. list for sure. I know Camden is like one of the best stadiums to go to. It's been on my list since I was like six. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, sure. well, as far as your question, but, like, here's the thing. The Orioles are about eh, five years away from being five years away. I mean, re- <laughs> you know, <laughs> the thing – and, you know, coming into today's this podcast with you guys, you know, I was looking back at the teams pretty much going all the way back. And, you know, the shirt I'm wearing here, this is a retro Eddie Murray shirt. You know, and this was yeah. – the last awesome. good decision the Orioles really ever made, in my opinion, as far as signings and firings, the Orioles finished in DFL dead last in, I think, 88, 87. They lost 100 games back then. And they had Eddie Murray, who I think either was close to winning the MVP or something of that effect, and they traded him away. They got rid of him that season. And when they came up to the owner and their coach or the manager at the time, they said, why did you get rid of our best player? And the guy said... If we lost 100 games with him, we can lose 100 games without him. And it's a great line, and there's so much truth to that. Cool. And 
coming into, you know, thinking about the so many years have gone by and between the Orioles drafting, which has been horrendous of all, because what do we need? Pitchers. Go look at our, our draft. It's been pitchers for days. I can name the Chris Tillmans and Brian Mattises and Gaussmans and it's just Adam Lowen just miss after miss after miss. And don't get me wrong. They hit it nice with Manny Machado, even Brian Roberts for a little bit, but their drafting has been horrendous. Baseball, it's not as guaranteed as some of the other sports, so I can't fault that too much. The signings that they've made over the years that have set them back from Albert Bell, which was that massive contract that just set him back for four or five years. Oh, I yeah. kind of compared a lot to football where if you draft a quarterback with your first pick and it it's a miss, you're looking at like three to four years of just rebuilding. I mean, it, you're just going to be set back. The same thing kind of happens in baseball with bad contracts. And if you now the Yankees with John Carlo, you can recover from that because it's a bigger market. But the Orioles aren't, aren't, aren't the top guy. If they're going right. to be giving Marty Cordova, they gave a huge contract to. We mentioned Chris Davis. They gave a huge contract to. I think they still have Mark Trumbo on the books this year. Like it's just stuff that you're like, what are you doing? And then mm, the last yeah. couple of years, these signings they made, in which they signed Alex Cobb to I think like a two-year, twenty-eight million dollar contract. And I remember texting a buddy going, "Why are we giving him fourteen million dollars? Like to do what? To eat innings? Like who cares at this point?" I am one of those people who I don't ever want to lose a game close. If we're gonna lose a game, lose by a lot. Like, what's the difference? Rebuild, Me too. make better signings, start over. What we need to do is get a new owner, get new general managers, and rebuild. And unfortunately, our owner's not selling because he's one of those owners who's in it for the profit, not for the winning. And when he dies, he's going to leave it to his son, Peter Angelos, who we all call Angelou's, which is all we ever do. Ooh. We, you know what? We are going to need to do more of this with you, Alan. Welcome back, baseball family. Thanks for sticking with us. We hope you enjoyed part one eh, of our interview with Alan. We have more content coming to you with uh, more conversation with Alan. It was a terrific experience. We could not get enough of talking to him, and uh, we hope he felt the same way. So more to come, and that is a tease for those of you listening. Before we go, Brad, why don't you tell us about the deal we have with Rep, Rep Sports and Ray's Energy? Okay, so listen up. We have we have actually a discount code for you for Raise Energy. I am actually drinking tonight. I'm drinking on the go. I've got this Baja Lime. It's fantastic. I've got it in my Thor shaker. It's delicious. Um, so if you use if you go to repsports.com, use BT Pod code BT Pod at checkout, you will get fifteen percent off. But if you don't want to pay for it right now, all you got to do is enter our giveaway. Send an email through the mailbag. Send us a question, and you could be entered for our giveaway. And also, Brig quoted a movie earlier in the podcast. Jump in the mailbag. Send us what movie that quote was from. The first person to email us, Brig is going to send you something. It'll be something significant. It's not going to be like the lint from his pocket. It'll be like something like significant that <laughs> yeah. you would like. Uh, so, so yeah, uh, let us know yeah. what movie the quote that was from. Um, and also send us a question in the mailbag to enter for the giveaway. If you don't want to enter the giveaway, go to rapsports.com and enter code BTPOD at checkout for 15% off. It's delicious. I've been sipping on this thing all night. So now, there you go. Now, just the, Brad was moving pretty quick. The on-the-go packets are the powdered version of Ray's Energy Drinks. Yeah. And they are There's reason literally, I've been you know, that. they're yeah, – yeah. They're they're this big little packets. They're you know about two inches or whatever. Yeah, I've got and, one. Uh, sure. If you're watching on YouTube, I've got one. You can see it. It's the Baja line yeah, that and I'm it, drinking tonight. Fantastic. Man, it they pack a punch. I'm telling you, Brad. They recommended what did they say? Eight eight or so ounces of water. Are you saying maybe twelve is more eight, appropriate? Eight to ten typically for at least for the, the Baja, Baja line. line. The Baja line is a little bit stronger, so I watered it down a little bit. I yeah. got up to about twelve ounces, um, and it's perfect. It's really good. It tastes just like what comes out of the can. Well, and the cool thing about the on-the-go packets is that you can sort of get what you want out of it because you just add a little bit more water, right? Yep. Um, I like that. I dig them. I had a Baja Lime this morning. That's what I was drinking today. And uh, I use it for a pre-workout sometimes. I use it to pick me up in the morning. I never crash, not once. Mm -hmm. And it is really fun, really tasty. God, it's so clean. The flavors, that's the best part. Mm -hmm. But... 
don't forget. So Brad said we're doing a giveaway. For those of you listening last week, you'll know, you'll remember that we are doing a sample pack giveaway with Ray's Energy Products. Um, it's at Rep Sports. If you don't want to wait for that, though, you can get the 15% off. And then that's different from the giveaway I'm going to do for the freaking movie quote. So don't forget to do both, okay? You have to enter into the mailbag a question about us, the show, baseball, whatever you want. Doesn't matter. Brad, tell people how they can submit to the mailbag. Just make it very clear. So there's a couple ways you can do it. There is always a link in the doobly-doo down, down in the description. If you're not sure what the doobly-doo is, it's the description. I always have a link down there that you can click. It will take you to the webpage on baseballtogether.com to submit through the mailbag submission form. All you got to do is put in your name, your email address, how we can get back to you, and then whatever question, comment, whatever you want to put in there, and it will send it directly to us. You can also just go straight to baseballtogether.com. I know not every podcast platform allows that link to be live. So go to baseballtogether.com, and we actually have it in the navigation up at the top. Just click Submit to the Mailbag. It'll take you to that same page, Yep. and you can just, like, just like you're submitting an email to any company, whatever, we have that same form there, so you can submit something through the mailbag so we can get your questions, whatever. If you want to give us some feedback about the podcast, that's great as well. But just send us a, an email, and we will enter you in our Ray's giveaway. Now, last time, last week on the show, I kind of just like went crazy and started talking about giveaways and discounts and stuff. <laughs> I get excited about that. So now I have to kind of follow through, which I, I love to do. It's great. But what we're going to do is we are doing, look, we're doing a discount just for our podcast listeners. It's mm-hmm. stupid. I mean, this is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but we're doing it anyway. All right. The discount code you want to use is BTPOD2525. BTPOD25. Through Monday at midnight Eastern Time, February 8th, everything on the shop is discounted 25%. 25% off everything in the shop. I can't believe I'm doing this. It's nuts, <laughs> but I'm doing it. All right, so for those of you listening, get after it. <laughs> <laughs> so get yourself Never do this. <laughs> yeah, this get is this is nice. the kind of stuff we reserve for our baseball family private Facebook group. That's it. It's true. Yeah, we've never done anything like this on the podcast before, not this steep. But hey, baseball family, don't forget, like we said, jump on the shop, N-I-N-E-P-L-U-S-U-S.com, 9plusus.com. Jump on there, use BTPod25 for 25% off anything. I've got my pirate hat tonight, my Arizona baseball together shirt. What are you wearing tonight, Brig? Dude, I'm wearing my perfect hat. I thought I almost put on my pirate hat. I knew it was black. But I'm wearing my perfect hat as well. It's black with white and gold with the reverse K. And then I got my uh, I got my uh, Korean baseball NC Dinos themed baseball together t-shirt. Very nice. So you can buy that or whatever the else best. you want. Like I said, 20%, 25% off. Don't forget to jump by baseballtogether.com. I almost stumbled over it there. And like we said, submit to the mailbag. Give us a like, a subscribe, rate us, review us. Uh, we want to hear what you guys think about the podcast. We really appreciate everybody listening. And don't forget to do all those things. That's a lot. That's a lot. Holy smokes. That's a lot. But, but we don't want just do it, man. Just do it. You'll be glad you did. And baseball family, we'll catch you next week. Mm-hmm.